afternoon. Uh, this is some of the work I've done for my MSc. So, um, from a biodiversity conservation perspective, KwaZulu Natal is internationally significant as it falls within a biologically rich transition zone between the northern tropical belt and the southern subtropical belt. Um, from the part of the Maputland Pond Land but Albany Biodiversity Hotspot and constitutes part of the distribution of South Africa's threatened grassland biome. Plantation forestry is considered a key threat to this grassland biome, but as a commercial operation, it's also required to be environmentally sensitive, and on average, one third of each plantation is left unplanted. These unplanted areas form large scale interconnected natural corridors and nodes for organism movement on both evolutionary and ecological timescales also referred to as ecological networks. The recommended minimum width for biodiversity conservation within these networks are 250 meters, but there are a lot of corridors that are more narrow than this that form an inherent part of the functioning of this production landscape, as they serve as power line servitudes and fire breaks. But these are considered as less suitable habitats as they suffer more edge effects from the pine matrix. But since many species occur in or have at least part of their distribution within these narrow corridors, um, within this, um, they may have some value as they provide valuable links and can increase long-term conservation success. And fragmentation has also been associated with high environmental heterogeneity, which is associated with a higher beta diversity, and the higher beta diversity among these patches may make up for the local negative effects of fragmentation. So the aim of my project was to determine the contribution of smaller grassland corridors to the overall conservation within the ecological network framework by exploring the role of corridor width in driving invertebrate assemblages across this transformed landscape and by investigating other possible environmental variables important for species distributions. I used ants and dung beetles as my focal taxa as both are known to respond to habitat and land use changes and both have previously been studied in this area. So my study area was in the grassland biome in the Kwazulu Natal Midlands, and the two main vegetation types in this area are the threatened Midlands Mistbelt grassland and the Drakensberg Foothill Moist grassland. My study area was quite close to where we are now. Um, this is an aerial photograph of one of the plantations I worked in. The dark green is pine plantations. This would be a small corridor, and this is a large corridor. So I had 50 sites, and I split my corridors into three size categories. 10 small corridors, which were less than 60 meters, which would suffer very strong edge effects, 10 medium corridors, which were 60 to 120 meters, and 10 large corridors, which were more than 120 meters. I also had 10 sites in a nearby protected area in Pendley Nature Reserve, which was intended to function as a reference site. I also had 10 in pine plantations. So together, making up five site types. So this is just a map of my study sites. These are in the, the states, and this is in the nearby protected area. So sampling took place in January and February 2013, and I used dung baited pitfall trap for sampling dung beetles and small glass tube traps for sampling ants. And the environmental variables I also used in my analysis were elevation, rockiness, soil hardness, vegetation type, and site type. I also split my dung beetles into two groups according to nesting behavior. Those that nested directly in the dung and beneath it I um, grouped into one group called tunnelers and then I also had rollers which rolled the dung away. So I sampled 21,000 dung beetle individuals and sorted them to 52 dung beetle species or morpho species and 12,000 ants sorted to 64 ant species. So the, this, this figure shows the differences in um, dung beetle species weakness and abundance between the different site types. So as expected, pine plantations had the lowest amount of dung beetle species. The protected area had the most, but corridor size was found to influence dung beetle species richness, with large corridors having similar amount of dung beetle species as the protected area, and the medium and small corridors ha housing significantly fewer dung beetle species. Um, there was no difference in dung beetle abundance between the different site types. So this diagram just shows the um, shared species among the site types. 
So what I just want to show you is that there were no unique downbeetle species in the pine. The protected area and large corridors each had four unique species, and the medium corridors had one, and the small corridors had none. This just shows you the differences in species composition among the different site types. So pine plantations house um, significantly different downbeetle assemblages compared to the grasslands. But the protected area also housed different assemblages compared to the corridors, and among the corridors themselves, there were no different assemblages. So the corridors, the smaller corridors, housed nested subsets of those dung beetles that were present in the larger corridors and contained significantly fewer species compared to the protected area. This diagram shows, or this figure shows the um, relationship between measured environmental variables and dung beetle species composition. Um, environmental variables that were found to significantly influence dung beetle species were elevation, vegetation type, and soil hardness. But you can also see that rolling dung beetle species richness had a close association with the protected area of sites. And I attribute this to differences in grazing management between these land uses, since um, the protected area contains a large number of pellet producing grazers, while the corridors mostly contains ca um, pet producing cattle. So for dung beetles, not only is size important, but also how you use it. So moving on to the ants, again, pine plantations contain significantly fewer ant species, but fragmentation did not seem to be such an important factor for them as the different um, corridors of different sizes were comparable to the protected area and species richness. Again, the shared species, pine plantations had one unique ant species, Large corridors are three. In the protected area, small corridors and medium corridors each contain five unique ant species. Again, pine plantations were significantly different in this ant species composition, but there was not such a marked difference in the ant assemblages present within the corridors in the protected area. And lastly, the only environmental variable that was found to significantly influence ant species was elevation. So in conclusion, Previous work in this area has shown that management is more important than design for grasshoppers. But including a broader range of taxa, we find that both design and management is important, and this seems to be the case for dung beetles. The relative importance of these two factors is most likely also determined by nesting guilt. Still, small, um, small corridors seem to add significantly to ant conservation, but we must remember that there are there may be complex abiotic and biotic interactions not taken into account by the pre present study. Conservation in smaller corridors are limited by the fact that an there is an increase in extinction risk with reduced habitat size, and that these smaller areas are temporarily more variable and do not necessarily guarantee the persistence of a species. Still, the smaller corridors contain a surprising amount of species and they provide additional foraging habitat and increased connectivity across this landscape. An active conservation planning and management um, may be valuable in areas restricted to only retaining smaller areas of natural patches. So dung beetles and ants responded differently to fragmentation, but both taxa in large corridors were comparable in species which is to protected area, and this stresses the importance of size for effective conservation through ecological networks. Although we can actively manage dung beetle assemblages within these corridors by including grazers not presently in the system, large corridors still contain the same amount of unique species as the protected area and the current grazing management does not seem to be detrimental. Environment, environmental variables associated with environmental heterogeneity were also found to be important for both taxa, and future planning should take the natural variations in the landscape into account. And I would like to thank the following people and institutions and you for your attention. <laughs>